Coming up on show 813, you can now order a new Volkswagen ID3. Well, maybe you can't order one, but some people can. Look, stick around, I'll give you the details. Plus on the podcast today, VW's new ID4 crossover is seen before they wanted you to see it. A lucid unveil their sedan in September. We've got the exact date towing with the new Opel slash Vauxhall Zafira eLife. And Ford's own hands-free driving system for the Mustang Mach-E. Just don't call it autopilot, whatever you do. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you're listening around the world. Welcome to EV News Daily. Here's what happened on Thursday, 18th of June. My name is Martin Lee, and I go through every EV story so you don't have to. Well, if you've been eagerly awaiting to get your hands on a brand new Volkswagen ID3, in particular the first edition trim, there'll be 30,000 of those made. Well, now is the time to order as of today. If you pre-booked the car, and 30,000 people did pre-book the car, you can now finalise the car. You can order your ID3 model in most European countries, says Clean Technica. Uh, they also say there's now something called the First Movers Club, who, uh, if you are in the First Movers Club, you get your car in uh, early to mid-September, but it will be missing some software. And if you don't mind waiting, uh, you will get your car in the next tranche of deliveries and the software will be complete. Depends how urgently you want to test drive the car, I suppose. Uh, some key stats about the ID3 first edition include the battery, which is 58 kilowatt hours on that. The power from the motors is 150 kilowatts. It's rear wheel drive on the first edition, and it's got 100 kilowatt fast charging with an 11 kilowatt AC onboard charger, all very useful for Europeans who might have access to a three phase power or some faster AC posts. So, that first edition car has a headline price of 39,995 euros in Germany, for instance, uh, with VAT included. Now, when you take off the 10,000 euros or so incentives that are currently on offer in Germany, it's very, very generous. That means that a car that is not a Golf, but looks like a Golf, same size as a Golf, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck just don't call it a golf it's the id3 uh, it is 29,400 euros after incentives for the first edition and that is a pretty good price for an ev not the longest of range 58 kilowatt hour battery like i say but wait if you don't have to be first in line and want to get the regular id the entry level model it will come down to something like 23,000 euros 23 and a half thousand euros in somewhere like germany that does have very Generous incentives, I'll give them that, but it's still, all of a sudden, I don't know, it's price parity with a equivalent combustion car, but it's not far off. Let's talk ID4 next, and the ID4, it's a crossover, and the production version of the car has now been seen before they wanted you to see it. VW have kept some camo on the car recently, and when they haven't used the camouflage, even most recently, they were seen doing some cold weather testing with the ID4, and they put the Kia, a front end of a Kia, I think with tape, to make it look like it was a Kia out test driving, which they're just having a laugh with us now, aren't they? Surely. They're just, have, they're just pulling our leg now. I don't mind the fake exhausts on the back of the cars, but when you paint a Kia front on your Volkswagen with the badge... You're taking the mick now, aren't you? Uh, we've already seen the concept in the pre-production versions of Volkswagen's upcoming MEB-based... SUV, the ID4 Cross. VW not ready to show it off to the world, but the pictures have been leaked. I think it is in a kind of regulatory filing or something they had to do in China with the authorities in China, which meant they had to post them, I don't know, for a license or something. They Because uh, the car is going to be made in China uh, to begin with. They had to send them pictures of it, and the, the, the Chinese authority published them. Well, according to Jalopnik, these leaked images show a number of views of the crossover, which will be the first MEB-based car to be sold in North America. Therefore, it will be at the vanguard of VW's push into mass-market battery electric vehicles in, U in the US. The real unanswered question, they say, is the price. If in the US they're making them for $35,000 or less with reasonable equipment, 
that is going to be very compelling. Of course, VW have access to, whilst it's around the $7,500 federal tax credit, it certainly won't be $35,000 pre any kind of incentives and all those kind of things. But maybe after everything is taken into account, it could be $35K. I don't know. It's going to be made in uh, the Chattanooga plant eventually as well when it's made in the US. And I rather flippantly on Twitter. And if Twitter isn't existing for me to write flippant things on the internet, what is it good for? Uh, I, I said yesterday that uh, for those that want an ID car from Volkswagen that have ordered the ID3, they should just wait because everybody's buying crossovers. Whether you like it or not, whether you agree or not, and personally I drive, I would prefer an estate car. I prefer a, uh, or a wagon, whatever you want to call it, but I would prefer... You can still get a load of stuff in it, and I just I don't want an SUV sitting outside my house. Uh, so I would I would go with that. But if you follow the numbers and the market and what everybody's buying, everybody seems to want an SUV slash crossover style thing. And so I said on Twitter, uh, you know, if you've ordered an ID three, just cancel it and wait for the ID four. Didn't go down very well, you know. Thought I'd try it, see what the opinion was like. Uh, that, that's what I think, but uh, plenty of people who are ID3 reservation holders would disagree with me uh, because they are different segment cars. You know, the ID3 is definitely not a Golf, definitely not a Golf, and the ID4 is definitely not the electric version of the Tiguan. Different cars, of course. Uh, let's talk Lucid, and they're unveiling their battery electric luxury sedan, the Lucid Air. It's going to be an online launch, like so many things have moved to being online, on September the 9th to the growing list of automakers planning digital reveals of new models in the wake of COVID. We can now add Lucid Motors, which said today they will be unveiling the production version of the Lucid Air on the 9th of September. I'm excited about the Lucid Air. I think it looks good. I somebody said to me that the, the car looks bland. Really? I think it's it's sleek. It's uh, low slung, and it's got uh, a great I think great design on it. Like the front end uh, looks looks uh, stylish, and I just think it's got some. You know, if you were going to buy yourself an expensive German saloon car for lots of motorway driving. It fits it, you know, as a good alternative to a BMW or a Mercedes-Benz. Uh, we've seen much of the prototype, including a teaser of the first edition, the Dream Edition variant. Final specs are still being guarded by Lucid, though. The official reveal will give us a look at the final interior and exterior photos. There was that tweet a couple of weeks ago when Lucid said that the air would be available in somewhere like the UAE, and they posted a picture along with the, the tweet, and that picture was very different to the prototype we'd seen. It had things like the uh, the radar sensors built into the bumper, uh, like the ADAS stuff, and uh, the uh, the journalist Tom Malogny got hold of Lucid and said, that picture you just put online, that looks like the finished car. And then Lucid had to go, oh, yes, it may or may not be the final version that we just accidentally put a picture of on the internet. However, we are looking forward to, for all the pictures, the inside and outside pictures, it was just one angle they put up. Uh, September the 9th, we are looking forward to, and I'm certainly looking forward to that. Lucid is a company, of course, the head of, uh, of Lucid, the CEO and CTO, Peter Rawlinson, a.k.a. Mr. Tesla Model S. Uh, they've got somebody else, I forget their name, but they've got somebody else working at Lucid who was basically the person that Tesla brought in when they couldn't sort all of the Model 3 problems at the beginning of that ramp, when it was production hell, um, I gather this is the person that Tesla brought in and uh, to, to sort it, to fix it all. And we know how many Model 3s they're making now, how successful that production line is. I gather he's at Lucid. So I think they've got good people, uh, some ex-Tesla people as well, but good people who are creating really good technology at Lucid particularly with efficiency. Like, if, if if Elon hadn't pushed the engineers to get that 402-mile range for the Model S recently, then, at least by September, then Lucid would have been the first 400-mile car out there. Easily, I think, is going to be 400 miles and a bit of driving range and uh, a flagship tri-motor version with 1,800 horsepower as well. I'm excited. about The, the closer it gets, they were they were a bit of a... Uh, a blind spot on my radar for a while back there. But the more I look into and read about Lucid and look at the videos of their factory and it just, you know what, it's, it's solid. 
everything I see from there, you know, the investment they've got, solid. I reckon they come up with a good car. I hope they. Uh, I hope I'm right. Let's talk about the Vauxhall slash Opel Zafira E Life. They've given details of the all electric version of the Zafira Life. It's a van. Goes on sale early next year. Shares the technology with other PSA uh, transporters. Uh, that we've been talking about on this podcast. According to Electrive, the Vauxhall slash Opel Zafira E-Life, the, uh, the drivetrain, the powertrain, I should say, corresponds that uh, to that of its sister cars, the Peugeot E-Traveller and the Citroën E-Space Tourer. All electric, people carrier, minivan, whatever you want to call it, has an output of 100 kilowatts, two battery versions, 75 kilowatts being the uh, kilowatt hours being the bigger one. Uh, as an option, uh, Opel will offer trailer coupling which means you can pull about 1,000 kilos uh, with this as well. There is sufficient storage inside the vehicle uh, with the large version, the long wheelbase version, 5.3 metres, and uh, loads of, of storage in that. But if you've got all eight seats occupied, I dare say you might need to bring a trailer for all of their suitcases when you do a uh, an airport run in one of them, or hotels might need the, the, the trailer and so uh, great news that EVs are starting to tow increasingly heavier, weight, heavier weights as well let's talk Ford next Ford is taking on the likes of Tesla with its own advanced driving system that'll debut with the first all electric vehicle the Mach-E it's Ford's Copilot 360 and it includes hands-free driving with active drive assist for uh, 100,000 miles of highway that's been mapped in the US and Canada. Announced today as the autopilot equivalent of what is the Model Y equivalent, the Mustang Mach-E, says Mashable. The new driving feature, they say, is similar to General Motors Super Cruise, which is already in some new caddies, uh, that it tracks the driver's eye and head position. If the cameras and the sensors sense that you aren't paying attention... Uh, then there's problems, even when the car is driving itself. An infrared driver-facing camera tracks where your eyes are gazing and your head position, and it alerts you, first of all, if you should be paying more attention, and eventually uh, it will, I think it'll slow down and stop the car if you are not looking at the road and paying attention. Well, the camera still works with sunglasses as well. On a call with Ford this week, a representative shared how the new system has been tested on 650,000 miles in a road in every U.S. state in every driving condition from rainstorms to cloudy nights and sunny days and Ford are very proud of their technology doing things in a different way uh, to the way that Tesla do it. Well, Tesla in China are inviting owners to serve as volunteers and it's not the first time we've uh, heard that familiar call to existing owners to come and help new owners as we get to the end of the quarter and delivery days. Uh, the user on Twitter, ray for tesla says, looks like Tesla in China are starting to push for the end of Q2 sales. I'm informed they are looking for owner volunteers to help out with reception and walkthrough. This happened once or twice, a couple of times, wasn't it, in the US, as Model 3 ramped as well. I gather in China there's going to be some incentives and little goodies for people that, uh, that help out, which is fantastic. Well, a brand new Buick Velite 7. It's a crossover and it's unveiled in China. And earlier this year, we got to know that the Buick Velite 7 is uh, basically, well, we got to know it because the Chinese Ministry of Industry and Information Technology uh, told us some more details. General Motors has officially now unveiled the first electric crossover that it's launching later this year in China and expanding their range in China, says GM Authority. Uh, while CNET says the shape of the Velite 7 is basically very similar to the Chevy Bolt EV and what is going to be the Chevy Bolt EUV, which they want us to call electric utility vehicle. It shares General Motors' BEV2 platform. And Buick in China didn't share any finer details uh, but it looks larger than a standard Bolt, more like the Bolt EUV will be when it comes to the US. And when asked about Velite 7's relation to the Bolt EUV, a Chevy spokesperson did say to Roadshow uh, that the two models will share the same platform, but refused to comment further. Uh, something slightly greater than the Bolt's range of 259 miles seems realistic uh, because there's going to be some new battery technology going into this, new modular 
high-performance lithium-ion batteries for the Velite 7 with a higher energy density than the cells which are inside the Bolt. It's a, it's a bigger car. The Bolt EUV will be bigger and uh, have to... Uh, be probably heavier, I, rem I imagine, a little bit, but obviously with better batteries, it could mean that there's even more range. Uh, 300 and something on the NED test cycle, which should basically be ignored these days, and uh, only China really using it as far as I know. And finally, if you, like me, enjoy a bit of racing, a bit of electric racing as well, Formula E is back. The championship announced today that six races will take place across nine days in August as part of three doubleheader events at the German facility in Berlin to complete the current campaign. Each pair of races will run on a different configuration of the airfield and it will be heavily restricted to the amount of uh, simulator preparation each team can undertake, uh, says Autosport magazine. Jaguar also announcing a seven-race program at Berlin Tempelhof to complete the calendar for the final season of the IPACE trophy. Real shame about that, actually. A couple of years, IPACEs were racing. Uh, the one-make electric SUV series is being mothballed at the end of the year uh, after two seasons of a three-year deal to support Formula E. Real shame, actually. I enjoyed seeing the I-Paces uh, bombing around the track, but uh, the entry list has been getting smaller, and I guess wasn't getting TV coverage, and I guess you had to really be into it to go and hunt it down on YouTube, but I still enjoyed it. The, the I-Paces were effectively road-going cars uh, with all the safety bits added, but they weren't otherwise tuned specifically for the racetrack, so... Real shame there, but good that Formula E is back. Right, question of the week. I'll read these out on Sunday's show. Uh, why don't you tell me about a conversation that you had with someone when you introduced them to EVs, either the concept of EVs or your specific car, maybe it's a test drive you gave or someone, a friend or a colleague. Uh, tell me about a conversation you had with someone who, when you introduced them to EVs, maybe what you said, what they said, their reaction, thing like that. I'd like to know. Uh, you can email me, hello at evnewsdaily.com, or leave a comment on the YouTube show. There are now 231 patrons of this podcast. Wowzers. I can't get over that. It's amazing, isn't it? Uh, these are people, companies who want to support the show, and by all means, have a look at the page. You don't have to, uh, but for the... Well, it was the price of a posh coffee or two, uh, which you won't be spending if you're doing stay-at-home measures. Uh, maybe you want to support a podcast like this one, patreon.com slash evnewsdaily, patreon.com slash evnewsdaily, if it's up your street. There are uh, some premium partners to mention. That would be Phil Roberts of Electric Future. That would be Brad Crosby. That would be Avid Technology. And Brightsmith Group for Clean Tech Talent. It's Porsche of the village in Cincinnati. It's Audi of Cincinnati East and it's Volvo Cars of Cincinnati East. And it's now nationalcharging.com in the US and, and Hawaii, alohacharge.com. If you want to get any of the previous shows in the archive, there are 812 of those just waiting for you. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow. And remember, there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid. <laughs>